All right, so Bree's going to kick us off uh, by introducing what ML.NET is, and then uh, we'll take it from there and dive into the presentation. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Louise. Uh, so uh, ML.NET is an open source and cross-platform machine learning framework for .NET, um, if you haven't heard of it yet. Uh, it runs anywhere that .NET runs. Uh, you can build and consume custom machine learning models uh, that could be locally or in the cloud, um, and it runs on all OSs. Um, and really, it's ML.NET is for uh, .NET developers, meaning uh, you can use your existing .NET skills and tools to integrate machine learning into your .NET applications, and you don't really need a data science or machine learning uh, expertise to, to build these models. Uh, and we have we offer tooling, uh, both in Visual Studio, that's our model builder tool, and uh, cross-platform, we have our CLI that uses automated machine learning uh, to build models for you, so you don't need that machine learning background. Awesome. Thanks, Bree. All right. So the topic that we're going to be talking about today is ML Ops. And just to give you a little bit of an a introduction, um, a very high-level overview of, of what ML Ops is, um, ML Ops is basically the combination of machine learning and applying DevOps practices to um, to machine learning. Uh, so typically within software engineering, you have these set of practices uh, and and just different um, different sort of uh, disciplines that come together to basically help build, uh, test, and deploy uh, pr uh, productions. Uh, applications in production. So why exactly is MLOps important? So as we've seen with in the software engineering space, it's become very important for, for several reasons. Um, for one of them, one of them is that you get automation. So as you start to basically build out these processes and put in place uh, these practices, um, you get some automation out of it. So you don't have to necessarily sit there. You can automate your tests. You can automate your deployment. You can automate your authorization of, of shipping your product to, to a production uh, server or wherever it is that you're deploying your application to. Um, and, and one of the things with this automation is you're able to log things, right? And, and you want to be able to log things because if for some reason your application were to perhaps, um, you know, go uh, end up in a sort of like a faulty state, or, or, or in a state that you don't necessarily want it to, to be in, um, by by having this this um, sort of log of all the steps that were taken and, and the specific uh, environments that your application was built with, the data that it was built with, um, you're you're able to basically audit and keep track of how how it was that you got to that particular state. Um, and and the other thing that that allows that logging. Uh, gives you is that it allows you to reproduce what it is that you're doing. So it, again, if your application is in a faulty state, you know what were the conditions that got it into that particular state. So you're able to reproduce and you're able to replicate the environment and potentially find any bugs that, that are in there, um, as well as if you just want to basically stand up uh, a separate instance of your application. Again, you can reproduce the steps that, that took place in order to basically uh, ship the application that you currently have in production, and, and you can just follow those steps. So that's that's kind of why MLOps is, is important. If we were to take a look at a high level at what the DevOps workflow is like, again, there's that build step where, and many things can happen here, but essentially this is where you're um, basically making uh, commits or you're checking in code to some sort of uh, version control. Uh, you're building your application. Once your application is built, uh, you want to test it. You want to make sure that before it gets shipped to your customers, you want to make sure that um, it, it, it works as it, as it is expected. So you go ahead and you test your application. Um, and once you've tested it, if everything passes, you go ahead and you deploy it. All right. So that's, that's at a very high level. Now, how, do, how or what does this look like from an MLOps standpoint? So from MLOps, typically you're either getting new data or you're making changes to the code that trains your machine learning model. And that's part of your train step. So uh, your train step is equivalent to your build step in, in, the, in the DevOps sort of workflow, all right? And once you've trained your model or multiple models, what you want to do is you want to evaluate whether your model is performing 
the way that you'd expect it, whether it behaves as you'd expect it, and whether it's reaching the accuracy and giving you the confidence that it can perform in a production scenario. So once you've evaluated your, your model, you then go ahead and you deploy. And deployment can, can mean two different things, as you're going to see in the presentation. The deployment can either be of the model or both the model as well as an, an end user application or an application that hosts the model. All right, so, so there's multiple types of deployment um, and, and you'll see, and I'll talk about them a little bit more uh, as I go through the demo. In terms of what we're gonna be talking about today, uh, this is kind of the, the structure of what a project looks like. Um, so if we go from left to right, we, we have our console application which is what's gonna be training our model, All right? So this here, we're in the build step or the train step of our, of our process. And what our console application does is basically uh, it has an underlying Azure storage um, a container uh, or containers. Uh, and that's basically where we have our data. And that data is pulled into the console application uh, a model is trained. In this case, we're going to be training an, uh, a binary classification algorithm to basically um, to basically uh, classify sentiment of comments. So once our model is trained, we then go ahead and we upload it to Azure Blob Storage so that it can so that it can be persisted, or at least that particular version of the model can be persisted for later use downstream in the in the rest of the steps. Once your train model is in Azure storage uh, in, in a blob container, um, you basically want to test that that model and you want to see its performance. You want to, first of all, you want to make sure that you're even able to load the model and you perform different sort of tests um, on your model uh, to make sure again that it's performing up to par with your standards. Um, in this case, the test application, it's uh, using X unit. So again, it's, it's, it's nothing necessarily out of the ordinary. It's basically the same type of applications that you'd be using uh, to test uh, your, your web applications or your, your desktop applications. So the functionality and, and the thought process is very much the same uh, in terms of setting up these projects. So once you're, if, if, you're, if your model is not performing as expected, um, that's sort of in, in your continuous integration or continuous uh, de deployment pipeline, it stops and your model is not sort of then deployed or sent to a, um, uh, or, or, or saved onto a production blob container. However, if it succeeds and your model performs uh, as you would expect it to, then in that case, it gets copied over to some sort of uh, production uh, production blob container. And, and that's sort of, that's one of the deployment pieces where you're basically putting the model in some place where, uh, where your application that's going to be using it downstream uh, can basically locate it. And that's exactly what happens uh, in the next step, which is in the deploy. You'll also have an Azure Functions.NET core project um, and the Azure Functions .NET Core project, all it is is it's a it's a serverless application that hosts your model and uh, accepts uh, HTTP requests with some sort of comments. It then uses the model that's in the production blob container, uh, and and basically uses that model to make predictions, and then it returns the prediction back to the user. So with that being said, let me go on to the demo and to show you what this application looks like. So one thing that I will mention is that there's a few assumptions that this makes, uh, right? You're going to be seeing uh, a few things and uh, they might not make a whole lot of sense. So just to preface it, um, basically one of the things that a minimum that this, that this uh, application sort of expects you to do or that it, what it assumes is that, again, you already have uh, an Azure storage account. And the Azure storage account, you have both your data, you have that sort of validation or your test um, blob container, as well as the production um, production blob container. So the validation and production, that's where your models are going to go, depending on which stage of your uh, continuous integration pipeline it's, it's at. And then your data, that's where your console application is going to be pulling the data from. So again, as, as you update this data, you can basically uh, train your models on, on new data. 
if we were to take a look at the data, again, as I mentioned, what we're going to be doing for this particular model is we're going to be training a sentiment analysis uh, binary classification model uh, that predicts the sentiment of, um, of comments. In this particular case, it's uh, Yelp comments, right? So the, the, the website that has restaurant reviews. Um, and as you can see, one of the columns, it's this, this particular file is tab delimited. Um, in this case, you have the, the comments, right? So, wow, I love this place. And then one, which means that uh, it's positive. And then crust is not good, which means that it is negative, right? Um, so this is going to be the file that we're going to be using. Now, let me just close all this so that it's not necessarily all getting in the way. Okay, so again, the application that we start off with is this uh, is this .NET Core C# Sharp .NET Core console application, and essentially the way that we start off is with this ML context. Let me actually, make it a little bit bigger just to make sure that you folks can see. There we go. Okay, so. I start off with the ML context and ML context, um, essentially that's the entry point for our application. Uh, and you can think of this as a DB context, uh, although it's not quite the same, but it's, you can think of it in, in those terms. All right. And this is the entry point for all ML.net applications. We then get, you call this method called get data and sync, which is basically going to take uh, a URI. In this case, it's going to be the URI of our blob, uh, block container containing our data or a data file. And, uh, we basically pull in that data as a stream. Uh, and, and basically create create a, uh, an enumerable out of it. Uh, we then call the load it from enumerable to basically load the data into an iData view. An iData view can be thought of as a table in a, in a, um, in a database, right? So it's basically contains the information about the schema of the data, the, like the data types that are represented by each, each of the columns, and it contains columns and, and rows, right? So it's a way to represent data uh, inside of ML.NET. So once our data is loaded, we basically define our pipeline. In this time, in this case, what we have are two transformations. And uh, one of them is featureized text. And what featureized text will do is it's actually sort of like a catch-all um, of a catch-all operation or transformation that actually performs multiple uh, very common uh, transformations that are that are common to text, uh, such as tokenization, um, basically removing stop words, uh, creating. Uh, Creating, creating n-grams and, and all that. So this calling this particular transform will do that all for you. Uh, and then once our basically our data is uh, featureized, what we do, do then is we use the uh, LBFGS uh, logistic regression algorithm to train our model. Once we've defined our pipeline for training, we go ahead and fit our model, and uh, which is basically what's gonna kick off this sort of training process. Uh, and then once we're happy with that, we go ahead and we save it to a file called model.zip. So the way that this looks like, all right, so train console. So after a few minutes, what's going to happen is it's going to basically load all the data. In this case, there's not a lot of data points. I think there's about a thousand. So it shouldn't take too long for us to basically get something here. Uh, again, as you can see, uh, the data the data was loaded, the model was trained, and then the model was saved. So might be a little difficult to see, but essentially there's our model.zip file, which is what a serialized version of our model. And what we can do with this model.zip file now is we can basically take it and either deploy it, we can test it. There's a whole bunch of things that we can do downstream with this particular file um, with the serialized version of this model. So, all right. So once we have sort of have our model, what we can do then is we can basically test it. So for the test, all we're doing is we're, we're, we actually only have two tests here. So um, one of the tests is basically we want to make sure that the model loads, right? So if I give you the path to the model, to the file containing my, my model, can you load it? And is it of type I transformer? So this I transformer is basically the, the, the type that these models uh, are. So we're checking, hey, if once you load the model, uh, if you're able to load it, 
is it an eye transformer? So that's the first check, making sure that the model loads and you can actually perform operations with it. And then the second one is we want to check the accuracy. So is our accuracy above 30%? Now, in this case, um, as you'll see, um, I'm kind of doing this um, basically uh, kind of just to show um, that, that it would pass, right? Uh, typically, 30% would be, it would not be a good uh, performance metric. Um, and it would be, in, in most cases, it would be much less than flipping a coin. Um, and basically, what we're doing is we're giving it some fake data, all right? Uh, and then with this fake data, we then go ahead and perform some of the same steps. We load the enumerable, uh, we load the model, we uh, apply the transform uh, function to basically make the predictions uh, on this batch set of data. Uh, we have, we call the evaluate function to basically get the metrics for our model, and then we basically say whether this model is uh, equal to greater than or equal to thirty percent. Okay. So let me actually kick this off in actually kick off this pipeline so that you can see what it looks like when it when it passes and then I'll show you what it looks like when it doesn't. So in this case I'm manually triggering it uh however um it's already set up to automatically trigger whenever there's changes of the, on, in the code. And then you're going to kind of see that later on as well in the presentation. Okay. So once that's done, I have this uh, Azure function upload server. So assuming that uh, my tests have passed, uh, two things happens. The first thing that happens is we have this Azure function uh, called upload validation. And upload validation, all it does is uh, it takes the file that, that was trained, the serialized version of the model, uh, and it uses the Azure uh, storage um, SDK to basically upload the saved file, uh, right? So, to, so it uses the um, Azure storage SDK to upload the, the serialized version of the model. And if it's successful, it just says upload it successfully, right? Um, similarly, if your tests were correct. Uh, if you're happy with your model, what you want to do at that point is you basically want to uh, upload it to production, right? So, uh, and, and the same series of steps take place here, right? So we're just basically taking the file and we're using the SDK to upload our, our model to a production container. And production and validation basically refer to those uh, Azure Blob storage con uh, containers that I was showing you before. Okay. So that's our upload service um, in terms of the application, um, the application that basically hosts our model and that makes predictions for us. It's also an Azure Functions application. And in this case, what we're doing is we're using dependency injection uh, and we have this startup class, which is essentially what, where we're registering a prediction engine pool. So a prediction engine pool is an object pool that contains prediction engine uh, objects, a prediction engine object. NML.net is basically a convenience API that allows you to make um, predictions on a single instance of data. So if you recall previously, when I was testing my model, I was using the transform uh, of method and the transform method, what that does is it makes predictions on an iData view or on a record uh, or in a set of numbers. Whereas prediction engine uh, basically just does it on a single instance of data. So it's, it provides that convenience where you don't have to necessarily create an iData view to make a prediction. You can just basically pass in um, uh, a particular uh, input and an output. And with regards to model input and output, basically um, with regards to model input and output, those things are defined here. So what I have here is a uh, an F sharp. So again, remember that ML.net is cross uh, is basically um, available for .NET. So that means that you can also do all of these things inside of F sharp. So what I've done here is I've taken a uh, class library, uh, I built a class library, and here I just defined a schema of the input expected by my model and the output that's gonna be produced. In this case, it's expecting a column uh, of string for the comment and a Boolean uh, containing the sentiment. That's what's gonna be going into the model. And what's gonna be coming out, it's going to be uh, this thing called predictive sentiment, which is gonna be a Boolean, uh, and it's gonna contain whether it's positive or negative. So that's essentially how our application works. Let me see here. Fresh. When we so when we kicked off 
that pipeline. There was nothing here at the moment, but you can see that as of 11.23, um, the model was sort of uploaded here and uh, the model was also uploaded to the validation, right? So we can see that our pipeline is working. Um, if we take a look at what that pipeline looks like in Azure DevOps, right, in a series of steps, there's actually two. There's a train and evaluate, and then there's the um, there's a there's the uh, sort of the upload to production service. So here, what we have here, the train the model. Basically, what this does is it runs the train console application to train our model, evaluate our model, runs that test model application, uh, basically making sure that uh, our model is passing our accuracy test and whether it can run or not. In this case, it's thirty percent, so of course it's going to pass. Uh, and then what it's doing is it's uploading the model to a validation container. Um, if and all this, if and if all this succeeds, then what happens is, then the model gets uploaded to a um, to the production container in Azure Blob Storage, right? So that's essentially what's going on here. Um, but I did say that thirty percent was too little. So what happens if we were to set it to ninety percent, right? So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm changing the code. Um, I'm changing the code and um, I'm, I'm essentially uh, going to trigger uh, a rerunning of the pipeline based on this uh, based on this change that I made to the code. So again, you can imagine that you are making changes to your um, you're making changes to your uh, to your to your model, right? How your model behaves or things like that. Or in this case, where you're making changes to the test to make sure that your your models are more robust. Um, in this case this will trigger a new, um, essentially a rerun of the pipeline and it's going to retrain your model and it's going to apply all of these changes for you. So all right, so let me sort of change this thing here. So basically, once I pushed um, the changes to the repository where this code is living, it's going to kick off our pipeline again. Um, let's see, sorry, pipeline. So our pipelines here are, are part of Azure DevOps. You can see that just now uh, that particular commit uh, was kicked off. And now it's basically performing the train and evaluate steps, All right? So it's going through all this and we should expect this to fail uh, right at around the evaluate model step. While that's going, I'm just gonna kind of show you what the end user application looks like. And I'm going to do it locally, even though I have a, a sort of a, <clears throat> um, a production version of it running. Um, I'm, I'm going to run it locally, mainly because uh, it's probably easier that way. So in this case, what we're going to be running is our sentiment analysis service. And one of the things that I mentioned here uh, that I didn't mention actually is notice how here it's pulling from a URI. So basically what happens here is... Um, by using this prediction engine pool service, automatically what's happening is uh, anytime that there are changes to to the um, to the, basically the endpoint or the file that that is at the location that I've specified in the URI. In this case, it's the Azure Blob storage container. Um, it automatically reloads the model. So one of the nice things about that is I don't have to basically redeploy my application. In this case, an Azure Functions application. Um, it's the changes are automatically going to get picked up as soon as there's changes to um, as soon as there's changes to the file uh, at the specified URI. So if I start this up, uh, it's going to start Azure Functions and essentially what I'm going to do is at some point it's going to load up uh, and it's going to, I'm going to be able to basically make a request to this analyze sentiment endpoint that is running uh, locally. While that's happening, let's take a quick look back here. And as we can see, that's exactly what happened. Um, we can see that it failed. We can actually go and inspect the particular tests that failed. 
test results. There we go. So you see one out of two, one pass, one failed. Um, I can basically get, see my test results and we can see that accuracy at or above 90% failed. Um, and we can see where, where exactly we can actually inspect the apple from the log. And what I was doing here is uh, I was basically doing kind of like a console output and we can see that the accuracy is 60%, um, which is not greater than or equal to 90%. So now based on this, I can go back and basically rework my model and do what I need to, to do in order to make sure that um, that my model performs as, as I want it to. Um, okay, so now that this is running, I can basically make a request to this analyze sentiment endpoint. Basically, I'm telling it, hey, the stake was bad or that was a, yeah. That was a bad stake. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to be able to see, right? So once I tell it, hey, that was a bad stake or the was a bad stake, it's, I still haven't had my coffee. Uh, we can see that it in fact is a negative um, sentiment. So that basically concludes uh, this, this talk. Um, you know, we basically went over how you can basically set up um, ML ops and what an MLOps pipeline would look like uh, using ML.net um, and, and why MLOps is important and why you should consider it as you're building your, your projects. Um, with that said, um, let me kind of go back here uh, and essentially let you know about things that are happening. So, whoops. Nope, <laughs> let me try that again. So let you know of things that are happening. Um, so this global Azure conference, it's happening today for the rest of the day today, uh, as well as tomorrow. There's a lot of really neat sessions on ML.net happening tomorrow from some of our, our MVPs. Uh, so make sure to check those out as well as some, some other sessions that are, that are happening that are really great uh, as they relate to Azure. Um, again, our MVPs, they're, they're very passionate and, and they set up a virtual sort of conference that's happening May 29th and the 30th. They're accepting um, submissions. So if you're interested in this stuff, um, you know, we, they would definitely love to have you and, and have your submissions and have you speak at this conference. Um, here are a list of resources that you can basically um, take a look at. Um, I'm going to paste in the chat the, I'm going to paste into the chat the um a link to the resources that were used in this particular presentation whoops um that's not what i was trying to do so it's the second link the one with the virtual azure ml ops uh, endpoint um so essentially that's that's what you want to basically go to and and you can get the the code that was used for this project and um, yeah, so make sure to tune in. Actually, I have another session on Azure Functions at 12 p.m. Eastern time, so in about half an hour. Uh, and then after that, uh, at 1 p.m., I'll do another one on deploying these machine learning models and go into a little bit of more detail. Uh, deploy those models using uh, tooling and, and frameworks uh, that are very popular within F Sharp. So yeah, make sure to stick around, check out the, the other awesome conferences. And uh, I would just want to thank Brie for you know, uh, helping out here uh, and helping me with this presentation. Thanks, folks. See you in half an hour.